Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the Shoei X-Spirit 3 helmet. If there's a more popular helmet with our customers than this Shoei X-Spirit 3 race helmet, then I've yet to discover it. Stick around and I'll run through the basics, the details, and the things that make this helmet so well loved by the people who, in all fairness, have spent a big old wedge of their money on one. It's Shoei's top of the range race helmet and it's been around for coming on six years as we make this video. Even though it's been around for such a long time, I'd say this lid still quite possibly represents the pinnacle of sports helmet design. So let's start on the outside. The shell is made from Shoei's Advanced Integrated Matrix Plus. That's a composite of fibers, inside show his own resin that they've developed to help manage impacts better and also to keep overall weight down. And putting this lid on our scales shows the work has paid off in terms of weight. This size medium weighs 1407 grams, which makes it one of the lighter helmets we've weighed. There are four main air inlets on this helmet to keep the rider cool on the inside, two on the chin and two up top. The upper of two chin vents is fairly conventional. You slide this section down and it exposes an inlet that draws air inside and then channels it out through the top of the chin bar. The lower of those two vents is also a slider, but it's a little bit more innovative. The air that comes through here can then travel sideways through the chin bar and then it comes through outlets behind the cheek pads, which cools those cheek pads down and reduces the temperature on the side of the rider's face. The two vents on top are kind of dual action. Sliding these shutters open, allows air to flow through to the inside of the lid where it can circulate through channels in the EPS impact liner and then escape through the exhaust vents at the back. These exhaust vents are always open which pulls that warm air through the helmet and lets it get away into the outside. When I said these vents are dual action that means the air coming through these vents doesn't only travel directly through to your skin on the inside. Shall we say that direct flow of air does cool you down a bit and it's also reassuring to feel it as it hits your skin but they also say the cooling effect of that is limited. When a lid fits tightly, shall we say that makes it harder for air to circulate through those channels in the EPS, which makes the polystyrene impact liner, the EPS, heat up. Shoei's solution to that is to direct some of the incoming air that comes in here so it can travel through channels between the shell and that EPS impact liner. They say that cools down the EPS and reduces the overall temperature inside the helmet. One of the big benefits that Shoei have over other manufacturers is that they've got their own wind tunnel which lets them test things like the ventilation and also the aerodynamics. Aerodynamics are absolutely key with a helmet that's designed for racing because stability at speed is absolutely crucial. Shoei have some impressive stats on the Xperit 3 when compared to the Xperit 2. They say there's 3% less lift, 10% less drag and that yawing action is reduced by half compared to the predecessor. And it's one of the main plus points that shines through from the customer reviews for this helmet, that it holds really steady in the wind flow. Some of that aero improvement comes from the add-on spoilers like these here, which help get the air off the shell without it disrupting the performance of the lid. Those two lower spoilers are designed to optimize stability in a straight line. The potential downside is that it can make it harder to turn your head at speed. Those spoilers are removable and there are smaller versions available as options, which make the helmet more suited to when the rider has the head turned to one side a lot. Shoei's UK race service, the people who look after the BSB races in this country, tell us hardly anyone ever swaps those spoilers, but the option is there. So let's move on to the visor where there are more aerodynamic benefits. These small protrusions around the ear are what they call vortex generators. And the idea is that they kick wind away from the visor surface to reduce the effect of the noise around here. The visor itself is quick release and it takes seconds to swap. It lifts and lowers with this tab on the left hand side and it clicks firmly down on the final push. There's an additional sliding lock just here to make absolutely sure it stays down. Slide this tab up and then the visor is held in place, it's not coming undone accidentally. There's another use for this tab, so if you start with the visor up and then pull this tab up before you lower the visor and just push to that tab, it keeps that visor just open slightly. It's a guide to keep a small gap around the base just for some airflow. And then if you push through that little bit further, the visor is now just down normally. It's not locked down, it's just as if it would have been normally pushed down. That tab 
leads to one of the very, very few criticisms of this helmet from the people who bought one. As some say it's just a little bit too easy to accidentally lift that tab just there and lock the visor down when you didn't want it locked down. So my advice on that is to practice using that lock a few times. So if you ever find the visor is really reluctant to lift, then you'll know why and you'll know what to do to sort it out. The visor has tear off posts, so racers can put a film across the front that they tear away to instantly get rid of dead bugs across in front of their view. And because the visor is perfectly flat from top to bottom, those tear offs will sit neatly on there without any air bubbles forming between the tear off and the visor. There's a pin lock insert to protect against mist. It's a max vision insert, so it covers all of the eye port. The insert's called a pin lock Evo, which is a showy specific name for what everyone else calls a pin lock 120. It's the most mist retardant pin lock option that's available. So let's move to the interior where there's actually quite a lot to cover with this helmet. The liner is fully removable, as you'd expect from a race helmet like this, and it's got thinner sections that tally with the vent inlets, which allows air to flow more freely through that comfort liner. The cheek pads have channels that are designed to accommodate spectacle arms as well. The lining is also customizable in terms of its fit. There are different thicknesses of skull and cheek pads available, and there are also optional pads that attach around the temples, which mean you can slightly alter the shape of the interior to suit your own head shape. There's also a really quick way of altering the lining to suit different riding positions. In standard position, the Xpirit 3 sits fairly straight on the rider's head, which suits riding in all but the most extreme tucks, which are the sort of things you'd get when you're riding on track. For those days, you can put this helmet in what's known as race mode, which will tilt the helmet back slightly and give you more forward vision when your head is angled down. It's dead simple to switch it. You just apply some downward pressure on the front top part of the cheek pads here, and then they slide down inside the helmet. And then you unclip the rear popper on the skull pad, slide it out, and then there's a little change you make in there to alter the angle of the skull pad too. Behind the comfort liner, there are recesses that let you put intercom speakers in there without upsetting the riding comfort. In standard trim, there are foam inserts clipped into those recesses. So if you're going without comms, then you've got those in there to deaden the sound a bit. There's a light chin curtain supplied in the box that you can slot in around the chin to protect against drafts around here. Or alternatively, there's a more solid wind deflector that can also slot into place there and just kick a bit of the wind away from the chin. The final but crucial detail with the interior is the strap fastener. It's a D-ring setup, as probably everyone would expect from a race helmet, but I find it's always best to make these things clear. And also the covers that stop this strap rubbing against your skin are removable so they can be taken out for washing. The last pieces of info before I wrap up. Sizing and approvals. The Xpirit 3 comes in sizes extra small to double XL, and there are four shell sizes. Extra small and small helmets share the smallest of shells. Medium and large each have their own shell, and then XL and 2XL share the largest of those shells. In terms of approvals, it's ECE 2205 for the road, it's ACU gold for racing here in Britain, and it achieved the maximum five stars in the UK government's Sharp Impact Testing Programme. So right at the beginning of this video, I said this was possibly the most popular helmet with sports bike shop customers. I'm basing that on the reviews left by owners. Of the 85 that have been posted for this helmet as we record this video, only one reviewer gave four stars and the rest gave the maximum five stars out of five. Quite a few people amongst those reviewers call this helmet noisy, but the vast majority of them still give it five stars. Some of those people say it's drafty as well because of the airflow that comes through, but again, the vast majority of those people still give it five stars. Showy have done their best to reduce noise, but race helmets just tend to be a bit noisier than regular road lids. These are the sort of issues that just come with using a race helmet on the road. And another thing is that you don't get the benefit of an internal sun visor, so you need to swap visors on days where you need a tinted one. That does mean some extra cost. It's around 60 quid for a tinted visor at the moment. And you also might want an extra pin lock so that you don't have to swap the pin lock from your clear visor to your dark one. Or you could go for the ultimate and spend around 190 pounds on a very lovely light reactive visor that will automatically darken or lighten to suit the conditions. So for me, I've worn both the original X-Spirit and the X-Spirit 2 in the past. Actually, I smashed the screen and clocks on my race bike by headbutting them with an X-Spirit a few years ago and this helmet has also been brilliant in my time with it. If I ever have a late life crisis and decide that I want to go racing again, which I won't, there are only two or three helmets that I'd consider wearing, and this is on the top of that list. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Showy X-Spirit 3 helmet, but if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.